important and urgent uh, was developed as a very simple four quadrant system back in the 1940s by an IBMer named Edwin Bliss. So it, got, it was being used by, in IBM for a lot of years. Then Stephen Covey said, what a great idea, and wrote a book about it. So, so quite a few people in the world know about important and urgent. How many of you have heard of it before? Yeah, even all over the world now, people have. It's a brilliant system for organizing priorities. We probably, if so many hands went up, we don't need to spend much time on it. But let's take a look at it. If uh, we look at it in terms of what we call format D, uh, we might notice, uh, or this is a basic Cartesian. I don't know if you know about Cartesians. Uh, then we've got important and urgent as one area. We can categorize what we're doing. So important and urgent are those areas of our priorities that if we don't do them, we're in trouble. If we don't pay the mortgage, whoa, <laughs> we're out of a house. So it's important and urgent. And that important means long-term. Urgent means short-term. So something that's both of long-term and short-term importance, urgent, is something that you're probably going to put attention on to get done. If you're prioritizing in your time book, that's one that would have an A plus prioritization. Any of you use the ABC system? A's are goals that uh, got to be done, need to be done within a short time frame. And A's are also goals that if you uh, put attention there, they give you real benefit for your time and energy spent. So uh, dividing goals into A goals, B goals, and C goals it has been something I've used for years. B goals are goals that are important, but I can put them off for a while. They're not urgent necessarily. Now, that might fit in this category, important but not urgent. That minus is for not, not urgent. Now this is an interesting area because if something's important and not urgent, it can also be long-term importance of great value to yourself and others. So often for you as coaches, for example, um, building your business is urgent. Practicing some of the uh, developed systems of working with this kind of person or that kind of person may be important but not urgent. It might easily get set aside and then set aside again and set aside again. So if, if you're going to become a great coach, it's often useful to um, notice how you can support the areas that are really important to you. Important is long term. Uh, important goals might be in your business building uh, connection with your stakeholders, build it, finding out who you might market to long term. Uh, if you don't do it today, you're still going to be successful, but it will absolutely make the difference long term. So you need to look at what's important to you. Uh, how will you know if you've got your result? And even if it's not something that has to be done this week, uh, how can you support important goals, organize around important goals, and get them done? Thoughts, everybody? Is this all old hat to you? Probably for some. Now, thinking about yourself as a coach might bring it fresh for you. You may have heard of important and urgent, but think about yourself in terms of how you're organizing to build your business, develop yourself as a coach, and so on. Uh, how do you want to spend your time? 
Now, a third area is not important, but urgent. Or, pardon me, not, yeah, not important, but urgent. Now, what does that mean? Well, our life is filled with these. We talked about them this morning. All the space killers, you know, the getting on the internet and following it through threads and alleyways, uh, work, fall, falling into some kind of a answer the telephone automatically mode, where even if you've got something that's a priority, uh, you let the telephone keep running your life, you never put it on some kind of a system where you answer later so that you can focus on what you're doing. Uh, there's all sorts of ways we lose our focus by following urgencies, even lunch. <laughs> I mean, there's some natural urgencies in life. But there's also ways in which people turn those natural urgencies into a lifestyle that removes your ability to get other things accomplished. So as you look at what's not an important and urgent, yet urgent in your normal scheduling of your life, you can see some areas which you could very easily, you know, just cancel that or cut it down or shift it. So you had a little more time for what's really important to you. Otherwise, in a day of 24 hours, subtracting eight, uh, you might not get around to the important things. There might be so many urgencies, you don't get the important things done. And finally, of course, the real, real uh, knock them out, uh, slow them down kinds of areas, not important and not urgent. Again, this might be, you know, the, the big time wasters, the t TV on forever, the ways in which people just lose themselves, if you like, in some sort of habit that uh, keeps them uh, far away from their goals. The things we talked about this morning. Now, uh, when people look at this, if you show this to a client uh, who's having difficulty finding time, uh, it may seem unfair to them because they may be, if they live in North America, somebody who's totally doing more than they can handle. There's a lot of North Americans who've got far more goals than they need and for them, the big issue is prioritizing in the first place. They wish they could do it all. And they, as they look at their daily uh, hours and minutes, not so easy. Does that make sense? And uh, they may say, well, gee, I'll probably have to, it's hard for me, but I'll have to postpone um, my, my, wish to learn Tibetan, darn. And they'll need to organize so that if they actually build the goal that is important to them or support the goals they really want to do, a few things may come off their list. But this helps them to do that, especially if you have them just uh, e even keep track of some of the things they say are truly important for them to accomplish uh, in the next three months and the things that are important and urgent to accomplish. I just sometimes draw lines on the page. And where, what could they borrow from? Is there anything that they could borrow from, time from, in these areas? This is kind of like your lodestone of possibility. Even if temporary, even if for just three months while you're learning coaching, you borrow time from your favorite television program and what you do is you uh, catch them all and look at them later. See, those are all possible ways to proceed. Now, I'm talking to you as clients, not as coaches, but 
this is exactly the kind of thing your client is going to be um, pondering over. And uh, it happens for all clients, and I'll tell you why. We're now living in the age of information. There is more that we can get caught up in in an average day than people could get caught up in, you know, in a, a thousand year lifetime uh, 500 years ago. We have so much. So it's very difficult to really promise yourself to stick with a priority. And that's what we're assisting people to do. That might mean this whole framework of organizing around priorities is one of their most difficult areas. They may have to say no to some things they want to do. Well, maybe next lifetime I'll be that musician I want to be. This is Marilyn talking. <laughs> so, you see, saying no to a priority is a little difficult for all of us because we love, we, we can find ways to build our loves in and you can assist people to do that. And as they do that and focus on what they truly want to achieve, they start to build the capacity for focus. Now, what are your thoughts about what I'm saying? 